Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the all new 2023 Dodge Hornet GT. This is finished off in black with an MSRP at just over $33,000. Powering the all new Hornet is a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine paired to a nine speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 268 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, sent through the all wheel drive system, propelling this 3,700 pound crossover from zero to 60 in just over six seconds. It has a top speed of 128 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 13 and a half gallons. You'll expect to see around 21 miles per gallon in the city, 29 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 103.8 inches. Its overall length is 178. It has a width of 82 and a height of 63.8 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this all new Hornet, you'll notice that there is no Dodge logo on the exterior spelled out to show Dodge. It only has the two markers located throughout this vehicle. So up front it's red. There's also a lot of cutouts right in the center portion to provide a lot of cooling to that turbocharged engine. And the lower section is the front sensor for the adaptive cruise and distance pacing. So for this just over $30,000 crossover, very nice to have that technology. Now it's interesting to note that the trim accents are not functional on the outside. So you have all the cooling right in the middle with those trim accents on each corner. This does have LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals with a very thin housing. So it matches nicely with the upper section of that grill. And then surprisingly, even though those are not functional, the hood extraction vents are functional. There's a small cutout right there. So airflow can go right through the middle and right over the hood. Great lines come off those trim pieces too, running right through the middle. Now, as we move to the side, this has a pretty standard set of 18 inch wheels, finished off in gloss black with a multi-spoke design to them. There is some plastic trim accents in the lower section of the front bumper, surrounds the fender arches and the lower side skirt. And it is pretty interesting to note that this almost looks like it has a mini lift kit. A lot of ground clearance, for this crossover vehicle. There's a Hornet logo just behind the front tire as well. We have the power folding side mirrors with the turn signal. There's no sunroof for this model. All of the window trim is blacked out. And from this angle, I think it has a really nice design to it. Now in some aspects, I think it looks similar to a Porsche Macan. Just with the styling that it has, you will notice that once we get to the rear, it starts to look very identical with the light bar that runs right through that trunk. Still has a great look to it, but I can see some of those design elements, maybe some other luxury focus brands like that. But in back, this has the body colored spoiler, brake light, and the wiper blade. It has a backup camera with the sensors, Hornet and GT logo. And then the sensors in the lower section where there's some more of that plastic trim. And working our way to the cargo space, you can double tap the button on the key fob. This is not a power operated lift gate, so that will just release it basically. Up underneath, there are two buttons. One on the right side will lock the vehicle, one on the left side will release it. So when you walk away, you can lock it, which is a nice feature to have. Now in back, this is a crossover vehicle. It's not the largest. If you're not looking for a normal size, I will say SUV, this is a little bit tight. You can see the items that I have in here but you do have a lot of interior storage. If I lift up the floor, look at the amount of space where you can hide in some items if you need to. So it's great that it gives you that additional space. There's a 12 volt and a hook on both sides and you can fold the back seats down too. So if you need a little bit more storage, you can do that. You can also remove this cover as well. It's just hooked on two sides. You remove that, you do get a little bit more storage. And then up top, there is a grab handle on both sides and then you can close it from there. So it's pretty functional and practical for the smaller size that it is, which is nice to see. For the uh, back seats, we have red stitching and the leather on the armrest, one of the speakers, and then the release handle. Nothing too fancy for the door panel, a little bit of storage down below, but we have a nice design for these leather seats. There's a different material running right through the middle, more of a vinyl type of material with all the stitching, but the leather, for the rest of the seat and all of the red stitching up top. Now at five foot 10, I actually have a good amount of space. Front seat set at my height. There's pockets behind both front seats, air vents, and some auxiliaries. 
and then I have about an inch or so above my head. Now these seats do not recline from what I have seen. If I pull on this tab, that is all that you get. So it's kind of upright feeling, but it's enough. If I need to ride around town, I really don't have any complaints with the amount of space. I don't have to hunch down or anything like that. Now, right in the middle, there's the armrest, two cup holders. You may be able to place your phone right in the middle there. And then this also has a cutout. So if you have some longer items and you don't want to fold the seat down, you can place them through there, which is nice. Now, the middle seat does not fold down by itself. So we have a 60-40 split, which is why there's that cutout. Now, as far as visibility goes, massive pillar right there. But over the last few days, I haven't had any issues with visibility. It's very easy to see. It's a small car, so there's really no blind spots. Now, you can lock the vehicle when you grab the door handle. It will unlock, of course. And same design for the front seats, lock and unlock, all the window adjustments, side mirror adjustments, a little bit more storage there. And then for these front seats, they have a nice design to them. They are manual adjusting to slide forward and back, your recline, incline, and then the height adjustment is the larger tab there. And as we move on to the steering wheel, we have a nice design with some brushed trim in the lower section. On the right side, there's Bluetooth adjustments along with volume. This scrolling dial will go through some more information for the gauge cluster and you have some pages to go through. On the left side, all of the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings. There's a sport mode and then another Dodge logo. Let's fire this up though. And we can go through this infotainment system now. For this gauge cluster on the left side, there's the miles per hour Right side will show you some various information along with the engine temperature. Fuel level is also located on that left side. And then right in the middle, currently it's showing miles per hour. To go through some more info, simply just use this pages button along with the scrolling dial. So if I push on that once, it will pop up with speedometer up underneath. If I scroll down, now there's some performance information to monitor. You can go into the driver assistance, also pull up any messages that you may have and then you are back to the speedometer. And then over on the left side of the steering wheel, there's all the headlight adjustments with a dimmer switch for the gauges, some more stitching on that leather. And then looking at the infotainment system, very easy to use. Home is in the upper left, so you can quickly get into this where you have a few shortcuts that you can manage. You can swipe over, look at your phone, some other vitals and trip information. You can even add some if you need to. Media is also on this left side along with comfort. So you can go into all the AC adjustments. You can sync everything, do the fan speed, where you would like the air to go. You can of course pair your phone to the system. And then if you go into a vehicle, just by clicking on that, you can shut the screen off. You can even turn on the rear facing camera. So we can take a look at that. I'm surprised with how good the graphics are for this economy style vehicle. You have parking sensors on one side, of course. And then up top, you can even get into my car. So you can look at some general information. You can go into the trip along with the performance page. So you can monitor some of that. Look at your consumption along with your auxiliary or your accessory gauges. And then the last one is settings. So if I go into settings, you have the general information to set that up as needed. There's even some shortcuts up top so you can get into some of these icons and go through what you would like to, which is great. You have a few other shortcuts up top for your profiles and then you have the date and the time and things like that. So it's a pretty user-friendly system with everything that you need. Underneath that, more stitching leads to two air vents in the middle and then a nice row of toggles. Temperature is on the far ends, fan speeds right in the middle and then where you like the air to go, auto and a few others are within that. Underneath the engine start stop button is the actual engine start stop feature. So at stoplights, when you put on the brake, you can decide whether you want the vehicle to shut off or not by utilizing that button. There's a few auxiliaries with this giant space where you can place a phone, no wireless charging in this model. I'm not sure if that's an option or not. Would be great to see for the placement where you can put your phone there. Looking at the shifter, if I put this into reverse, we get that backup camera. You can also shift using the shifter itself. No paddles for this model, but you have the shifter there if you need to utilize that. Now on the left side, there's power for the audio along with volume just by rotating it. The e-brake is just behind that. And then there's traction control and the parking sensors, which you can turn on and off. Two cup holders are right in the middle. And then there's a decent amount of storage space for the center armrest. So you can place some items in there 
along with the glove box, of course. You have plenty of room. Now, a look at visibility. Very easy to see in all directions. Like I said earlier, with that large pillar in the back, it really doesn't hinder your amount of visibility, which is nice to see. Up top, we have some of the don't light controls and some help buttons as well. As we set off now behind the wheel of the all new Dodge Hornet, this has been a pretty cool crossover vehicle to drive over the last couple of days. For just over 30 grand, you have a nice economical style vehicle that still offers a good bit of room. It's practical even for its size, but then you can also put it into sport mode and you can shift now using this shifter. And while it's not a highly performance oriented vehicle, it's not bad so far. We do have some roads here that we can kind of test it out on. It's got some performance to it. It's not the most performance oriented. I kind of thought the new Hornet would maybe have some more styling like that. Uh, but so far, I mean, I'm on some pretty tight roads here. I do wish that it offered paddle shifters. As surprising as that sounds, going around these turns and having to reach down to shift, you know, it's like a, a manual transmission would, but it's actually pretty responsive in the shifts too. I think you can feel some of the torque steer for sure. I don't know what the split is in the all wheel drive system, but it's, I mean, it's, it's doing these okay. Not all that bad. It's not really a performance oriented crossover, but I mean, you could go through the mountains, you could go on twisties like this, and aside from some of that torque steer you can feel there, honestly not bad. So the performance aspects of this Hornet GT, it's kind of there. I don't think the owner is buying this to do driving like I'm doing right now. But aside from that, I've been driving this for a few days now and it's super nice. It's well put together for the eco-friendly style of vehicle it is. Not a whole lot of road noise or wind noise. It's pretty composed feeling out on the highway and things like that. Uh, very tight in the turning radius too. So it's not a big vehicle if you know, you're not looking for something quite large. Let's just keep it in the normal mode though and uh, pedal to the floor. So you can, you can feel that steering wheel want to turn a little bit. So it may have more power to the front wheels than the rear wheels. Again, I don't know the split in that, but like I said, it's comfortable to drive, very fuel efficient. I've driven it quite a long, a long distance on uh, just half a tank so far. And the interior is what you'd expect for a $30,000 vehicle. I do like that it has the adaptive cruise with distance pacing. I think that it's definitely missing the wireless charging, especially for the size of that pad there. So even for this lower price point, I think it could have the wireless charging, maybe a few other tech features, but for the price and what you're getting, it's honestly a pretty good bargain for this style of vehicle. And with it just in the normal setting, here we go. Even coming around a turn, you can see I'm fighting the steering wheel just slightly with that torque steer from this. But the all new Dodge Hornet GT, just over 30 grand. It's not a performance oriented style vehicle, but on these twisties that I have for it today, it's not doing that bad. I could definitely, you can hear the wheels kind of chirp slightly there just from the power delay. But honestly, not bad. You're not buying this to do the driving that I'm doing right now, but it has the capabilities. It's not something that's going to be a hardcore mountain type of vehicle like this by any means. Maybe some performance modifications could help that as far as suspension goes. Uh, but if you're maybe doing this every now and then, it's got potential. I'm impressed. It's just getting used to some of the torque steer around turns and things like that. It's not as aggressive, of course, as rear wheel drive or like an X drive system or a quattro all wheel drive systems like that. 
So come around turns, just have to be a little bit more aware of the type of car that you're behind the wheel. This is not something to go out and just pedal to the floor. But I have been impressed for 30 grand and what this vehicle is. Low center of gravity handles very well for the type of economy style vehicle that this is. And it's pretty quiet, composed feeling. I think it's a nice option. It's, a, it's cool to see a Dodge introducing this new model for that entry level basically price point. You know, the average price of a new vehicle today and what people are paying is close to $50,000. So for 20K under that, for a new vehicle that has some nice tech features to it, not a bad option to go with. I think it looks pretty cool from the outside. Interior, you know, there's plastics here. It's 30 grand, it's, it's what you would expect. But if this is in your budget and you're looking for a vehicle of this size, it's been very nice for the week that I've had it. And I do like the layout of everything. Super simple, but also just the basics that you need without going too overboard. And of course, that's what the extra prices for other vehicles add on, all the extra bells and whistles that you may not really care for or want. So the all new Dodge Hornet, a little bit of a performance oriented vehicle, slightly. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this 2023 GT. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.